Hello everyone, Marco Montemagno here, the Tech Alchemist, and today with me from Sweden, uh, Karl Fridjofsson. Ciao, ah, Karl, how are you? I am good. How are you doing, Marco? We were talking before, I, I said I have such a horrible surname that no one can say Montemagno, and I uh, created on <laughs> SoundCloud and how to pronounce my surname. Oh, I said, okay. I should, I should probably take you up on that. <laughs> yeah. Fridjofsson is tough one. Tip. <laughs> All right, so for you Tech Alchemist guys, um, Carl, I think will be a very, very interesting guest because um, he's co-founder and CEO of uh, RAP, which is going very, very, very good. And we'll talk about that. And uh, I think is a very interesting um, company to follow because uh, uh, he is mixing, you know, mobile, online, offline, the retailing world, the gift cards world. So, so many things around that. And I think we can have a lot of tips and advices from, from Carl today. So Carl, thank you so much for being here. And uh, before to begin, I want to tell you how I discovered rap, because <laughs> that, that was really incredible for me. Uh, I, I was telling you before, I was a table tennis player, okay? Professional <laughs> table tennis player, no, not an amateur. I was playing all over the world. And uh, Sweden has got the most amazing table tennis player in the history of human beings. Jan Ove Wallner. How do you say Jan Ove Wallner? Yeah, Jan Ove Wallner. I, Jan I think Ove that's Wallner. a beautiful pronunciation. Yeah, it, yeah. it is, uh, you know, the Mozart of table tennis. So <laughs> all the people from around the world just went to Sweden to know and to meet this guy. And uh, <laughs> what, what I started to think in this period was that Sweden was an amazing country because uh, so many times, uh, let's say black swan, the, the black swan theory, a black swan. So something uh, incredible came out from Sweden, which is a, is a small country. I mean, it's not uh, USA, I mean, so, uh, but some, someone or something or a company came out and uh, surprisingly, j just they, they were worldwide and they were amazing. So, and uh, when I saw rap, I thought, gosh, I think this will be another, you know, black swan thing because uh, surprisingly starts to grow and, uh, and then everyone is talking about. So I was really curious about this. Um, my crazy theory is about this correlation between sport and business. I have no <laughs> facts <laughs> behind that. <laughs> but, I was... no, but actually, I saw some statistics. I, I wish I remember the exact, uh, the exact numbers here. But I saw some statistics way back about the disproportionate performance of Sweden. Um, you know, when you put in comparison the, the, the size of the country. Uh, and then in the number of Olympic medals that we've received throughout the years, and and uh, we were pretty pretty good in that. Uh, but I think it's very much. I wish I could say it's, it's all because of table tennis, but I think it's a lot because of the the Winter Olympic statistics was also part of that. And we get a lot of snow, so I think that's one reason why we're performing relatively well. With that. I I don't want to talk with you about sports for twenty minutes, but just I, it's it's interesting because um, uh, Bjorn Borg, I mean, he, he was uh, you know from from nowhere, and then he was an amazing player all over. The, but in company in business, I don't want to say bullshit, but I think IKEA is is a Swedish company. Maybe it, yeah. is. I, it, it is. is. It is. It is. And it's a, a massive success everywhere. So it's amazing mm -hmm. how Sweden can come out with this uh, uh, phenomenon, really. So and yeah, I think and crap I think, will be something. I, like I, that. Think, I if think if you if you go into kind of the tech and the internet space, I think that we've done relatively well in in Sweden as well. Um, when you think of companies like Skype, um, and more recent one is of course Spotify, and as well as the payment provider Klarna which are a couple of really, really big companies that have spun out of Sweden. And I think uh, you, you, you mentioned me earlier about the, the SoundCloud and, and using, using SoundCloud to get people to pronounce your name correctly. And SoundCloud happens to be another company which is founded by Swedes, but they founded the company in Germany. So um, it, I, think, I think both Germany and Sweden is trying to take credit for that company at the moment. That's very, but, but it's because you think it's an, it's an ecosystem now that is developing after, I mean, Skype success or something like that? Or Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Um, and, and we may talk more about this during the interview, but we happen to be very proud to have Niklas Sandström as an investor and part of our board, the founder of Skype. And I think that he, once again, using the sports metaphor here, I think that he has play, played a similar role to what Bjorn Borg did for Swedish tennis. Um, he, he became that explicit role model. Everybody got a face about on this internet entrepreneur success 
and you could kind of relate that to this, this specific individual. Um, and what happens in Swedish tennis in the 70s, Bjorn Borg became very successful, and then we had a couple of generations afterwards with, with continuous success uh, on, on kind of world tennis scale. Um, and I think that's, that's really what has happened in the Swedish internet and startup space, and, and me very much thanks to, to Niklas Sandström and Skype. But as well, I think, you know, in the very, in the late 90s, I think broadband penetration was uh, very, very rapidly adopted in Sweden, in, in relative to other countries. I think that helped us a lot as well. So um, I think there are numerous factors that plays into it, but I definitely think that we have a very nice and good ecosystem in Sweden at the moment, and in the whole Nordic, re Nordic region, I would say, not only Sweden. Excellent. Uh, my missing link of my crazy theory is that if Nik Niklas Denstrom is a good table tennis player, then it means, you know, this is the, <laughs> the answer to all the... I, I will check with him sooner or later. Oh, uh, right, I, I wouldn't know that. Yeah. I, know he's good, I know he's a good sailor. Uh, okay. He sails a lot, but uh, maybe he does table tennis as well. Let's I say he does, for the sake of this interview. I think that's good. <laughs> All right, Carl, I stop talking about sport. My, my fault. Okay, let's talk about serious stuff. Um, first, I would like to understand better the, this uh, gift cards business. Uh, in general, because I think uh, many people and many companies are underestimating the size of, of the market. And when I saw the size of the market uh, that you are going to, uh, I thought, gosh, this is a huge market. You know, I thought it was not so big in so many countries. So can you elaborate a little bit about this gift cards business? Uh, what, what, what are you going for with, with RAP? What, you, what are we talking about? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and just like you mentioned here, I was very surprised the first time I started doing research on, on statistics about the market as well. Uh, it, that is such a massive market. And the, the number that we usually use is, is a number which says that the, the gift card market is more than $100 billion in the US alone per year. Um, and each time you say like a billion, it sounds like so much. And it is so much. But, but it, uh, to put that in comparison, I think because you know Spotify once again a Swedish startup example that has done tremendously well for itself it's attacking a market the music market which is roughly 17 billion uh, annually and that's on a global scale and gift card is 100 billion in the US alone so it, it, it's truly truly a massive market um, and it's much bigger than we ever thought it was um, and if, of course that, that's positive for us and, and then there's a lot of statistics as well I think US is really the gift card the whole market of gift card um, to, of various reasons, um, and that, of course, the size of the market tells you a lot. But also the fact that gift card is is the number one requested gift, like five years in a row, five years straight in a row in the U.S. I mean, it's the most desired gift to receive as well. So it's not only is the market big in terms of financial, but it's actually something which people really love to to receive. It's it's something uh, which is so appreciated as a gift, um, and. Once again, in the U.S., it's, it's extremely big and very mature, the gift card market. But it exists more or less all over, all over the world um, in, in various shapes and forms. And we've, we've tried to do done some estimates about the global gift card market. You know, how big is it if we aggregate everything? But we haven't been able to really dig up a good number, but it's, it's, it's still huge. I mean, we're talking at least 150, maybe even up to 200 billion globally. Um, so, so everyone it's, doing it's gifts massive, around massive. the world. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, and and I think as well we knew, and this is obviously the, one of the reasons why we're doing this with Wrap is, you know, what Groupon did with coupons. Um, one thing is the online to offline that whole marketing um, marketing value proposition that they they use, which we're also trying to leverage. But secondly, you know, digitalizing. Uh, uh, of what traditionally have been physical a coupon and they made that digital that it you know a gift card shares so many similarities to a coupon in in the way that it's packaged and and you know how, how it's used in terms of the redemption processes and all the back-end systems um, and the biggest innovation that the gift card market has seen is probably going from from paper to plastic you know with a magnetic stripe that's the biggest innovation that that the gift card market has seen in the past 10 years or so. And it made so much sense when we started looking into the gift card space that, of course, this, this is an industry that is going digital just like so many others. Um, and if, if we can you know, be on top of that digitalization and also you know, be able to, to take a slice of that 
pretty pretty large pie, I think Rap could become a pretty successful company. So to, to recap to people totally out of the gift cards business and the gift card um, mechanism is just that if I want to uh, give a present to make a present to someone, I just uh, give him a card or a company is giving him a card and you go with this card, with this physical card in the traditional business in a shop and you get the discount or whatever it is. It, it, it was working like that more or less. Yeah, no, so I, I would say yeah, it, it, it does to a, to a lot of extent, but I think what a gift card really is is that it's, it's, a, it's a proof of purchase that is attached to a specific denomination of value. So it's 100 euro to be used at a specific store, let's say the Gap, right? So, and, and it's, tot it's totally unconditional. A gift card is, should always be unconditional, meaning that it's not tied to any specific um, purchases. I don't have to buy items A, B, Z, um, and it's not attached to any minimum spend, like a coupon would be, you know, I have to spend the minimum of of a hundred, then I can use this, whatever it is. So a gift card is totally unconditional. It could be used, it's equivalent to cash, but it's restricted to this specific store or chain of stores. Um, so that's really what a gift card is. And, and what, what they used to be, you know, 20 years ago or something, uh, when you went into a store to purchase a gift card, they would actually write a piece of paper with pretty nice handwriting and they would say, this is worth 100 euros. And then you would give that to the consumer, and then he'd have to save that. And if he lost it somewhere, you know, then, then that 100 euro was gone. Um, and what happened was, with, by leveraging the whole credit card um, and magnetic stripe ecosystem, gift card went into plastic. So now, instead of writing a piece of paper, which of course has a lot of fraud risks attached to it, and people would copy this and whatever, um, what companies started to do is, is to use magnetic stripes and plastic cards, similar to a gift card. So you would load that, that card with a specific value, and then you'd have that in your wallet or wherever, and then you go into the store and, and swipe that, just like a regular credit card. Um, and now we're doing that digitally. Yeah. How, can you elaborate about how RAP is, is working? I mean, what, what, what really changed, what's the big change with, uh, with RAP in this gift cards business? Yeah. Um, so, um, I think if we, if, we, if we continue on kind of the, the pure gift card product, which we're digitalizing, um, you know, what we are doing is that we are, of course, um, putting it into this thing where, uh, where we have a mobile application, so you store all your digital gift cards in the mobile device. So what a lot of people would, would um, if you've been familiar with gift card before, what you would recognize is this, that you get a gift card and then you put it in a drawer somewhere or you put it in, in your purse or whatever and then you forget about it and then you find it X number of years later when you're moving houses and you're emptying that drawer and you say, oh, this old gift card, you know. And they usually attach to, a, to a, an expiration term. So often gift cards will expire for you depending on the market and some regulations, right? Um, but we, we put the digital gift cards in your mobile device. You have them with you at all time, right? So whenever you walk in the streets and you, you walk by that store where you know that you have a gift card, you will, you will remember that, hey, I have a gift card. And by the way, I also have it with me because I never leave home without my smartphone. So um, that's one, one of the benefits of digitalizing gift cards. The other thing is that when you make it digital, you can also make it interactive. So we are, of course, adding the social layer on top of the gift card product. So we have integrated our platform into Facebook. So you, when you give somebody a gift card, you can of course leverage the social graph and your friends there. And, and at the same time, the communication that Facebook can enable, that whole communication can now be surrounded in the, in the wrap product and for this digital gift card. So if I give you a gift card, Marco, I'd be very interested to understand what do you think about this gift, gift card? You know, I show the store for you. I show the store the gap. You know, and I gave this to you. Was did you like the gap? Was that was that something you wanted? So of course, there's there's a, an instant feedback loop that I'm looking for. Are you happy for this gift? And then eventually, when you go in and redeem this gift card, I'm of course very curious to understand. Hey, what did you actually buy, Marco? Maybe I I told you that here's a gift card at the Gap. I know you want this new shirt. I know they have it in your size or whatever, whatever. Um, and then you go in and redeem it. I'm of course curious to understand. Did you actually purchase that specific item or not? So we can facilitate that whole interactivity and that discussion within our application. And um, how do you collect all this information? 
straight to the app because you record uh, everything that is redeemed uh, and uh, or if I am rating my purchases and you try to get out uh, that out of it. Now at, at the moment we are we are leveraging basically interactivity between the sender and the giver. So whatever the 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 sender uh, or sorry the giver wants to communicate back to the sender that that what the, the platform currently facilitates. So let's say you went into the gap and you bought something that you didn't want me to uh, to know that you bought, whatever reason it could be. Um, then of course that information is not pushed back. So it's more about creating a dialogue between the sender and the giver. And the, what the application does when you go into the gap to redeem your gift card, I will instantly get pinged on my cell phone saying, "Hey, Marco just redeemed your gift card at the gap. Are you curious what he what he purchased? Why don't you ask him?" And then I could continue that dialogue within that our application. I could ask you, "Hey, what did you get?" And you could say, "I bought this, and I could like that, and et cetera, et cetera." So, so we we are you know from a from the traditional gift card uh, industry, we are making it digital and interactive and social. I think that that's the, the one of the big innovations that we're doing. But I think another one which is important to highlight <clears throat> is that we have also changed how retailers use gift cards. Um, and retailers historically have been using gift cards do because it had been it has been a, an attractive product to sell and the reason why it's attractive it's because I sell it to you today so you pay me today but I don't need to take up any cost for this this uh, purchase until you actually go in and redeem this which is sometime in the future so it's a positive cash flow effect from gift cards I'm basically collecting cash uh, and then I'm I'm waiting whatever it is one day up to a year up to five years depending on the market when you go in and redeem this gift card um, and that's when I need to take on a cost for it. But what we realized when we when we integrated and built our platform on on top of of uh, Facebook and the graph there, we realized that one of the one of the real strength in social media and one of the core reasons why people communicate in Facebook uh, or across Facebook and other social media is reasons they celebrate. So usually the communication is triggered by an event. Somebody maybe changes their relationship status to being married. Somebody uploads a picture of their newborn baby. Or on Facebook, you know, on the top right hand side corner, you would see this person has his birthday today. Right? That's one of the main triggers why people then start talking, hey Marco, happy birthday. You know, I haven't spoken to you in a couple of months, but now I'm I'm all of a sudden reminded that I, I should speak to you and the reminder, the trigger of that is a reason to celebrate. So we understood that one of the one of the huge triggers and the reasons for people to interact on social media is reasons that they want to celebrate. So we want to create RAF and make this a platform that you could celebrate any occasion. So our slogan is kind of celebrate your friends every day. And that's what RAF is really all about. We have made part of the gifting experience free. So you can actually give a gift card for at, at very prominent and, and well attractive retailers for free to your friends. So this could be anything from you know maybe five euro up to 25, 30, depending on depending on uh, the retailer and the category that they're in. And the reason why I'm able to give you Marco a gift card at the gap for let's say fifteen dollars for free, the reason for that is because Gap uses RAP as a marketing platform as well as a distribution channel for gift cards. And the way that the marketing platform works is that a retailer, they specify a campaign with RAP and decides the type of demographics, so the type of desired consumers that they want to attract and bring into their stores. And they would, they would uh, target this based on you know, age, gender, geographics, etc., etc., the traditional demographical uh, targeting. And then the way the, the then retailer sets a specific denomination and a value how much am I willing to give this type of consumer if I can get him to come into our store and shop? And they would say, you know, Marco, he, did, he fits into this type of demographical pattern. So let's say we're willing to give this type of demographics 15 euros to come into our store because we know that if this type of demographics come into our store, they don't only shop for 15 euros. They spend, a, you know, a thousand euros. Not a thousand, but a hundred euros at least, right? Um, so we, they, they, they have a perception that some some specific type of demographics are more profitable than others. So they can then set incentives and triggers to get those type of consumers into the store. And the clever thing, yeah, and the clever thing with RAP is, is that uh, the distribution of these incentives to get into the store is done through friends. 
So that's the, once again back to the we call this friend to friend marketing. So me, you know, let's say Marco that that you're of a certain age and 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 gender and and most importantly you live in Italy, right? Me being Swedish, the same gender, different age and definitely different geographics. Um, if I would go in and, and, and say that I want to celebrate Marco using RAP, when I click on you, RAP then determines the demographical patterns of you and it presents unique offers that are uh, targeted to you. It's not targeted to me, it's not based on who I am, it's b only based on who you are. Um, and then it's up to the friends, me or any of your other friends, to basically decide which of these brands should I celebrate Marco with today and what is the reason for that. So it's always it's always the the decision is always made by your friends. So the, a brand using rap would never be able to get to you and target you unless you have a friend that basically vouch for this brand and say this is a brand I want to give Marco because I know that Marco likes. Let, let me focus on this car because I think it's very very interesting. So number one, a brand is not pushy. So also the perception of, of a brand is not invasive, but is a friend is your friend uh, sending you a uh, gift perfect. so for a brand right. is perfect because it's let's say word of mouth so it's a friend to friend yep. Yep. Uh, marketing so it's great and uh, also I'm thinking that is very useful because I never know which kind of gift or present to do and if I have an app that helps me to choose not based on my taste there is always I, I would only give table tennis things so but, uh, it's very good to to have an app that helps you based on the demographic of your friend so I think this is correct, also correct. Uh, excellent so I, I see a lot of advantages but my question is um, okay now is probably much much easier for you guys to go there to retailers and say hey look why don't we do a partnership uh, or why don't you you want to do a deal with um uh, with rap uh, because we have great investors uh, we have these tons of users we have these tons of uh, previous deals and so on so now i think it's uh, much much easier but when you started when you, mm -hmm. when you just begun and went to, I don't know, Gap and say, hey, hello, we rap. <laughs> Why don't you run a campaign with us? I don't think it was so easy just to explain how it works. So how mm. did you uh, close the, the first deals with first retailers? Uh, what was the, the key to, to mm. go further? Yeah, so, I mean, this is the traditional chicken and an egg situation, right? Um, if we don't have the users, maybe the retailers aren't interested and without the retailers we wouldn't be able to get the users. So I think luckily for us the timing for RAP is, is right now. Um, so when we meet with a retailer and explain the value proposition of RAP, you know, one thing is that we sell their gift cards. We, we, you know, we, we're doing that in a digital channel and that, that's like, oh, okay, nice, fine. You know, maybe some incremental sales that you can generate for it. But the cool thing is really the, the, the marketing platform and the aspect of, of using RAP as a non-intrusive channel to reach your potential desired consumers. Um, and what we do is that we leverage social graph and social media as well as smartphones. Bas so basically what we are, we are, a, we are a very explicit social media and mobile marketing uh, channel that, that that uh, creates real value and and drives real performances for them. So it's it's all you know it's all about buzzwords here. But I think the retail is an industry that is struggling for various reasons. You know, recession is one. The whole kind of e-commerce versus offline brick and mortar space. Who's winning and how how should we treat that? The whole cost structures of the traditional retail industry is is being challenged. Um, so they are of course looking for innovative solutions and reasons. Uh, to, to continue succeeding in this uh, space. And I think that we have provided a very, very explicit tool that uses you know, two of the biggest trends that, that the world has seen in the past years, which is social media innovation as well as, as the smartphone ecosystem. Um, so it, it, just, it just fits kind of the timing right now. I, uh, I think that's one of the benefits. The, the second thing is that our model, our business model behind that, is 100% performance based. So our incentives are 100% aligned with our retailers that are partnering with us. So they only pay for our services if we're actually able to deliver a consumer into their store that opens up their wallet and purchases something. Only if, if a successful redemption of these 
uh, these promotional gift cards is being is happening that's when we charge the retailers so we have very very uh, aligned incentives which means that it's it's an honest way to do business with them they, there's very little risk involved for the retailers and then of course you know from a technical perspective we're trying to make it as simple as possible minimum integrations what not what not right so um, I think that we have really tried to to package this in uh, according to the needs of what the industry is looking for uh, and then we have lowered the thresholds uh, in all different components possible to make sure that it's easy for them to try it out and see if it works. Um, and luckily for us is that we've been able to attract quite a few retailers. Uh, you trying to find only, let's say, big retailers that they have shops everywhere so it's easy to to um, handle the, the, the purchases because then in the end person has to go with the with the gift to, to, to redeem it somewhere. So, uh, by the way, this is another uh, amazing advantage that I think Rep is bringing to, to retailers, that you bring people in the shop and this has really no value in this moment, I think. So, um, the, you, you're only closing deals with huge retailers or you try to find also the small, medium retailers, um, you try to also include them? Yeah, so uh, at the moment, our, our vision of what RAP is, um, is really kind of a, the traditional mall metaphor, the shopping mall, right? So when you go into a shopping mall, there are, it's dominated by big brands, big change that you would see in each shopping mall. Uh, and then there are some, some sometimes there's some cooler, smaller type of brands that are available in this shopping mall as well, which may, gives it a bit of flavor and style to it. So that's really what we're trying to do here at the moment as well. And, and for us, the primary reason for this is, is due to resource allocation. So if we can sign a deal with the Gap that has, whatever it is, thousand stores across the U.S., and we can roll this out with one sales process rather than you know, signing up this small local player in Boston and then this other small local one in St. Louis, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, obviously, that, that the implementation aspects of RAP is equivalent for us if we're rolling out Gap with thousand stores as if we're rolling out, you know, Joe's mom and pop store with only one location. So it, from a resource allocation, it just makes sense for us to go after the big brands. And then I think, thirdly, is, is you know, from our user perspective as well, we are a new service, relatively new service, right? Um, and it's about building trust with our users and getting them to understand what RAP is really about um, and, and showing the value of it. And I think that it, that is easily done. We, we can more easily communicate our value proposition if we partner with big brands that, that you know, they are familiar with before. So they, they have some kind of familiar, familiarity with our application when they come into it. And how about the users, Carl? I mean, in the beginning, it, it was the same chicken egg problem because you say you can't say, hey, users come to me, use rap if I don't have retailers. So you first focused on finding good retailers, good brands, good offer, and then you started to, to marketing your, uh, your app? Or how did you solve this problem in the beginning? Uh, yeah, so... I think uh, we were lucky. We launched in Sweden first, and this was in we launched uh, uh, kind of nationwide in Sweden in November last year. Um, and I think one of the benefits that we received in Sweden was that we were able to make somewhat of a big bang uh, in in this little small local market. So we raised money from Niklas Sandstrom. Obviously, we got a lot of press coverage for that, and and. Um, me and my fellow co-founders, you know, especially our CEO, Yalmar, he has somewhat of a brand from before and, and is, is somewhat well-known serial entrepreneur. So uh, he could also stir some attention around this new venture that he was involved in. So I think that we, we came over that initial threshold quite quickly in Sweden because uh, that, that kind of critical, critical mass of users, we, we reached that quite quickly because we were able to, to get some, some attention. Um, and then, of course, you know, when we launched in Sweden, we launched with the, some of the biggest nationwide retail chains. So we had really, really strong brands from day one. Um, and, and, you know, free gift cards from really big retailers, that, that is attractive to a lot of users. Um, so, so, you know, once, once you get that critical mass, and everything about rap is really viral, right? I'd give you a gift. In order for you to receive that gift, 
the gift is stored within the RAP application. So you sign up to our application, and then you will then be reminded and prompted to send gifts to your friends. So it really spreads layer of layer of layer, right? So that that's really how our growth looks like. So um, once we reach that that critical mass, I think it was easier to continue our growth. I don't remember the name, the title of the book. I, I read a book a few years ago, Viral Loop Inside. And I, 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 if I think about rap, it's exactly like that. It's, it's viral by default. To, to, to work, it has to be viral. So it will spread. Right, right, right. So you don't really have in this moment like a, a marketing campaign running. You, you just go viral or you also support your, your growth with, uh, I don't know, traditional advertising or whatever. No, we actually uh, we do, we do very little traditional advertisement. We 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 focus quite a lot on PR. I mean, we 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 try to be active in PR um, and and be heard that way. But other than that, we are really leveraging our user base and growing with them, as well as as using our retailers that we partner with. So, what Wrap is for for retailers? It's also kind of a tool to make their brand ambassador. Uh, or to give their brand ambassador something explicit to share with their friends. So let's say that I am a huge fan of, of H&M, the Swedish uh, fashion chain. If I'm a huge fan of H&M, um, you know, I would probably be more likely to give you a gift card for H&M because I'm, I'm trying to kind of convert you and convince you that, hey, this is such an amazing store. I love this store. You should come with me to the store. That's why I'm giving you this gift card. Um, so we're also using our retailers to kind of reach their brand ambassadors and, and through that being able to, to leverage you know, whatever followers they have um, and get new users that way. Okay, a uh, few, few minutes more and then I, I let you go, Carl. Uh, okay, gift cards business, checked. <clears throat> Everything clear, huge business and uh, great uh, uh, feeling by you guys. Congrats to uh, intercept that this trend and is a huge business. Um, rap, how it works, okay. Uh, I would like you to help with some tips and advices about um, a few topics. The first one is mobile app. I mean, rap is basically a mobile app, okay? It works only also on, on a website, but basically uh, it, it has been designed to, to work as a mobile app, right? So um, w what's your top tip or what are your top three tips to to create a, a mobile app that works in a moment where uh, you have on App Store gazillions of mobile apps, so it's very difficult to be, you know, on the screen of the of right, the right. user. So, what are your top advices on this topic? Yeah, and and I mean, you're touching upon kind of one of the core core concepts that we have discussed with Wrap. And it's just like you mentioned, being on the home screen on the mobile app. That's that's prime real estate location, right? If you if you are on that home screen screen, uh, there's a scarce resource. There's only a number of apps that can be there, um, and there's so many that are forgotten, right? Um, I think what we have been been uh, bouncing back and forth is is two things. One is frequency. The other thing is virality. Those are the two core concepts of our that that we have try to design our whole product around. So what, what could be the reasons why people would share these applications to any, any other of their friends? You know, the virality aspects. And the, the, the second is frequency. How often could a user use this? Is this a one-off or is this a continuous basis, on a continuous basis? Is it monthly, is it weekly, is it daily? And how can we increase that frequency? What, what can we create and design within our product to make this, um, this Remind, or remind our users to use this more frequently and create a good value proposition and a reason to do that. So I think um, you know, creating a mobile app today is, is difficult. It's difficult because it, there is, there's so much competition now. There's so many apps out there. And it's also difficult because of the fact that it's, it's costly if you want to be cross-platform. Right? You, have to, you, have, you cannot only design for iOS. You have to design for Android as well. People are expecting it. And soon they may be expecting it for Windows Mobile as well. Um, and if you then want a web application on top of that, you know, obviously you need to create that as well. So there is, uh, there's so many, there's so many startups out there that are talking about the lean startup mentality, which I'm very, very much a fan of. But in in Rap's instance, we have actually, you know, we raised ten and a half million 
US dollars in our Series A, which was quite a big round of money in relation to how far we were with our company at that point in time. Um, and we have invested quite, quite significantly and aggressively into our development, um, development team because we see that there, there's so much that we want to do. There's so many things that, that need to be done because we're working on these three platforms, web, Android, and iOS in parallel. There's, it's complex. Um, so I think going back to the core, if you want to, if you want to create a mobile app that, that you, um, if you want to try to create a successful mobile app, you really need to think through you know, how often will a user use this and why would a user want to use this more often than once. And then what, what, what aspects of this application could, could be a uh, reason for me to share this with other people. Because really, virality, I mean, that's, that's a key growth driver to your application. You could, all, you know, if, if you're in the business of, of marketing spend, there will always be one competitor that, that tries to outbid you on, on Google AdWords or whatever it is, if it's American Idol TV ads or something, something. So you want to be, you don't want to become addicted by marketing. Uh, it's not, it's not, nothing wrong to use marketing, but you should make sure that, that the core of your product is something that can grow virally. Um, I think that, that, that's key. Frequency and virality. I will write it somewhere, you know, like uh, the, your quote, frequency and virality. I like it a lot. Okay. My, my co-founder of Rap would be very happy if they saw that in writing. I, yeah. I know they've heard that. Many, many <laughs> Just uh, I'm just curious. You you've been mentioning um, Nicholas Denstrom and a uh, great round A of in investment. I I saw also Greelock and uh, partners. So Reid Hoffman uh, also uh, in, in Greelock. So you you get funded by great investors. What was the key to get uh, such important investors funding your company? Right. Yeah. I mean, as as always with with fundraising, it's you know, you have to understand it takes a lot of time. It's, you usually see the press, press release. This fundraising is now completed. Hooray for this company, right? But it's a lot of work behind that, and, and it takes a lot of time. Um, both Reed and Nicholas was actually involved in RAP from a very, very early, early stage um, in, in the sense that they were, they were providing us with feedback and we were balancing our ideas with them. Um, and I think it, for RAP, you know, one of the one of the benefits for us, I think, was the fact that that the co-founding team at RAP had a a network and access to some of these prominent investors, so we could get that first meeting, right? Which of course is is um, which of course is crucial, right? But then, really, I I think that we are tackling a huge market that we already discussed. So the total size of your market needs to be tremendously big in order for you to have a shot at creating a company that's valuable enough. So, I mean, let's say in our instance, you know, we, we raised 10 and a half million US um, and our investors, I don't know what multiple they're expecting, whatever it is, if it's 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 times that money. But of course, the valuation increase of RAP is, is expected to be significantly higher. And in order for, for a company to actually be able to reach those type of absolute numbers in, in valuations, um, it needs to be in a market which is big enough. It needs to be attacking a problem that is, that is big enough to appeal that, that those type of financial. Carl, top two or three, I, I asked this to all the Tech Alchemist guests, <laughs> your top two or top three uh, tools or website or app that uh, absolutely suggest to use if someone is in the digital business you say okay you can't live without this uh, these tools it can be whatever you want someone say ah oh, okay analytics or whatever from positioning promoting or or partnership point of view but your two or or uh, three tools the, the one the apps that you have on your on your screen or the one that you can you can't live without I like that question. It's a good one. Um, the, the boring answer is Google Apps, but I don't want to say that, so I'll, I'll take right. that back. Um, and and, but and yeah, that, you can't that, say that any boring. table tennis apps because I already say that, so I know that. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. No, I have one awesome app, uh, which is on my uh, smartphone, 
which is called, I'm just going to make sure that I have the name right, because I think they changed the name quite uh, soon, uh, recently, Sign Easy. So it, it's basically an application to sign uh, documents on your, on, your, uh, on your smartphone when you're on the go. So you sign on the, on the, on the, on the screen here. So, it, it, I mean, it, printing is a hassle, right? And then you need to scan it, and then you're emailing it back. I mean, you, as, as the more you can avoid printing, the better the world is from all aspects of it, environmentally and, you know, management-wise and that kind of stuff, and security-wise, you know, storing in the cloud is much better than having it in a, some kind of folder here. So sign AC, uh, I think it's a, it's a great recommendation. Um, the other tool that we use quite frequently here at RAP is, uh, is a tool called Asana, which is a project management, uh, project management tool. It's actually founded by one of the, the early guys at Facebook. I can't remember which one it is at the moment. Anyway, they, they raised quite a significant round, and it's, in, it's a really good project management tool. Um, when you're working in, in, in teams and you have a lot of tasks that need to be completed and they are you know, interlinked with each other and that complexity that, that could happen. You know, with RAP, we're working across multiple markets. Uh, we have people spread out over the world. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen that are linked to each other. So K kind Asana of, is, is a great tool. Kind of base camp but more evolved. Yes, exactly. It's, it's definitely a couple of, couple of notches more advanced than base camp. I love base camp as well. but the, you know the, the simple and the consumerization of, of software uh, sometimes on, only only gets you that uh, that far. At, at some point in time, you need a little more sophisticated tool. And Asana, I, I think, is a perfect. Once you're done with Basecamp, you can go to Asana, and, and that's a good extension of it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, last question, Carl. What's next? I mean, if you try to open your crystal ball and think, okay, what will happen in the next two years in my market? Uh, it will happen this. So you, you bet 100% on the digitalization of uh, the gift cards market and uh, only rap will exist <laughs> in the world. What, what will happen? What's your vision? That'd be nice. Yeah, that would, would uh, be Yeah, it would be, it would be. No, I think um, for us in the very near term is Christmas. Everything is about Christmas. That's the, in the holiday season. The holiday season is, is you know, one of the biggest gifting occasions globally right and uh, we of course want to be want to be one of the one of the default ways to to celebrate your friends during the holiday season you can't be there with everyone right you can only give a physical present to so many people because you because you can only be in one location at a time um, so I think rap can facilitate a lot of that that gifting needs that you could uh, use um, but then I think if you look a little a little further ahead I think one aspect like you mentioned is the digitalization of gift cards that that is happening we're not the only people focusing on that there's a lot of people trying to trying to be part of that innovation but I think what what really touches upon the gift card space and the and digitalization of that is also the whole digital wallet war if you may say um, what will happen in with the digital wallets and you know with the wrap application we have a digital wallet as well where you store your your digital gift cards so we're not trying to become a, a digital wallet in the general purpose. We're only doing gift cards. But I think that whole ecosystem around, you know, Apple released its passbook and, and uh, what will happen, of, what is the extension of that? And there are so many other players out there in the market as well that is trying to, to, um, to revolutionize the wallet space. And I think we are, we are scratching that surface from our little gift card angle to a certain extent. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see that whole that whole ecosystem evolve and to, to see what will happen there. It's, um, I, I'm not sure who will be the winner and what will happen, but uh, it's definitely going to be interesting. And I think that, that we, will, we could at least be impacted by that uh, to a certain extent. You, you've been talking a lot about celebration, and, uh, which is good. You know, it's a very positive value. So I'm waiting for a, a worldwide celebration day from Rep, if you haven't organized yet, where you celebrate, everyone celebrate, you know, at uh, <laughs> Rep would be the one. Yeah, no, I, I, definitely. That, that's, that, that's something lovely. And, and also, I mean, I think it's important to highlight that, you know, Rep is all about gifting and celebrating your friends, but actually... You know, we're also working with uh, non-profit organizations. You can actually donate to charity on behalf of your friends. So everything is really, the, the core of RAP is really about, um, 
how about that that whole gifting and the nature of gifting, giving to someone else rather than yourself. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Carl Fridjofsson, a co-founder of Rap. Uh, Carl, uh, really, you were very, very gentle to, to share all these tips and keep in touch for everything. Good luck. Thank you, Marco. It was lovely. Thank you. And good luck with the table tennis. <laughs> Bye.